Hey everyone. The other week I was searching through GitHub looking at the Indo Trojan X99 re repo, which, similar to the Rafanazmi repo, has no files, but we know from looking at the search results in GitHub, there is actual code in there. Once again, we're going to use the script for getting this. with the username and the repository name and what we get back is something that clearly already has Bitcoin addresses in it and files here it says that it's ransomware right up front so there's really no doubt that this is what we're going after. So let's dump this in here. And then if we go in there, we'll start breaking it apart to see exactly what it's doing. So first off, we have the title. We can get rid of that. Now, the first thing we see here is that if there is a password being set in the post variables, it's going to define some functions for us. So there's not much in the end of here, the end of the file. It's just sending mail to somebody with a little bit of information there and uh, presenting a form for the end user to get their files hopefully back. So really the interesting part here is going to be getting into the file itself. So the nice thing is, is that for all of these files, all that it's really doing is compressing them with a .crypt uh, backup. So it's not really doing terribly much in the way of actual encryption. But still, this is not something that you really want to see. And if it comes across a file that is with the crypt, it doesn't actually do anything to it. We get some interesting uh, email addresses here. It does some eval of the price. So that's another interesting part there. Opens a crypt.php file to write things to. Writes out the contents of the evalved uh, post price. That's kind of interesting. And then sets up a HT access file, forcing the directory index to that new file that it created. And also defines a 
function for doing this to the entire directory. Nothing really new here. If the password is set, it goes and it encrypts the directory root right off the bat and copies that new file everywhere, copies the HT access file everywhere or to the document root. And then interestingly enough, it creates a backup file of the malicious HT access file just in case, and then sends in mail to the person that, uh, person's email that they put in. If that happens to be the domain owner, then that's who it goes to. So the interesting thing here is this dollar file. Okay. So dollar file gets this string replaced with the password in the post this email with the password in the email, this with the BTC and dollar three with dollar and whatever the price is. Then it gets decoded or encoded and then decoded with an eval and it gets written out. So let's take a look at, so nothing special is really happening with the file itself. So we can rip all of this out and take a look at what that file actually is. So let's just make sure that we got this right. Yep. And now here we see what it's actually doing. So the interesting thing here is that this file is getting, this is the file that's getting created as the index page. So this is the crypt.php file, which means that, so here's the password that's getting replaced with whatever the, the ransomware deployer is doing. So if we look at what this was doing before, all it's doing is writing out your files prior to this. So if you can detect that this happened, you should just be able to GZ inflate your files your .crypt files and get your files back without paying. Because here, actually, in this particular case, it's just a, a straight up uh, GZ inflate. It doesn't do anything special to it. So there you go. This was an, another uh, case where here you have an empty repository, but in fact, what you have is a ransomware script that's very simply not even encode, encrypting your files, it's just compressing them. So there you have it. Yet another case where you have an empty repository that is actually pretty dangerous.